What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about virtualization and cloud technologies. We're going to break down the concepts of virtualization, cloud services, and deployment methods, providing a clear understanding of how these technologies work and their differences. First, let's talk about virtualization. So virtualization is a technology that allows you to create a virtual version of something like an operating system, server, or storage device, rather than an actual physical version. Essentially, you're using software to emulate hardware resources. Now, why is virtualization important? It allows organizations to maximize hardware usage, reducing costs, improve scalability, and enhance disaster recovery. For virtualization, you can run multiple operating systems or applications on a single physical physical machine, enabling efficient use of resources. And there are two key components to virtualization. You have what is called the hypervisor, and then you have what is called the guest operating system. So let's look at these in detail. The hypervisor, this is the software layer that enables virtualization. It sits between the physical hardware and the virtual machines, allowing multiple VMs to share the physical resources of a single machine, such as the CPU, memory, and storage. In hypervisors, they come in two main types. The first one is called a type one or a bare metal hypervisor. And this runs directly on the hardware without a host operating system. And some examples include VMware, ESXi, Microsoft Hyper-V, and Zen Server. Because they run directly on hardware, Type 1 hypervisors are typically used in enterprise environments where performance and efficiency are critical. Then we have what is called a Type 2 hypervisor or a hosted hypervisor, and this runs on top of a hosted operating system. And examples of this include Oracle VirtualBox and VMware Workstation. Type 2 hypervisors are often used for testing and development environments since they are easier to set up but may have slight lower performance compared to type 1. So the hypervisor is responsible for managing the VMs and allocating resources as needed, ensuring that each VM operates independently and securely from one another. All right, so let's talk about the guest operating system. So the guest operating system is the operating system installed within a virtual machine. It behaves just like it would on a physical computer. You can install, configure, and run applications on the guest operating system, and each VM can have its own unique operating system. So for example, one VM might run Windows while another runs Linux, all on the same physical hardware. And each VM is isolated from the others, meaning if one guest operating system experiences an issue or failure, it doesn't affect the others running on the same host. And the benefits of virtual machines are as follows. You have resource optimization. So multiple VMs can share the same hardware resources. It provides scalability. So new VMs can be created quickly and it provides isolation. So each VM is isolated from the others, providing security and stability. Now that we have the foundational understanding of virtualization, let's move on to cloud technologies. All right, so the cloud, this refers to a network of remote servers hosted on the internet that store, manage, and process data. Cloud computing allows users to access and utilize these remote resources on demand without needing to invest in their own hardware. And there are three main cloud service models to become familiar with. The first one is called software as a service. Then we have platform as a service. And then we have what is called infrastructure as a service. And each of these models provides a different level of control and flexibility. And we're gonna go ahead and break down each of the models. But before we break them down, on your screen right here is a graphic displaying the differences between infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So essentially, everything that's highlighted in blue are things that you and or your company are responsible for. And everything that is highlighted in gray is everything that your cloud service provider is responsible for. Now, if you were lost and confused on that last graphic, here is a graphic displaying pizza as a service. So once again, everything in blue is everything that you are responsible for when it comes to providing yourself some pizza. And everything that is in green is everything that the vendor is responsible for in the event that you want to eat some pizza. 
All right, so let's talk about software as a service. So this is a cloud model where applications are hosted by third party providers and made available to users over the internet. And the key features of software as a service are as follows. The provider manages the entire infrastructure, including hardware, storage, and the application itself. Users simply access the software through a web browser or a client. And popular examples include things like Google Workspace, Microsoft 365, and Salesforce. And the advantages of software as a service are as follows. It provides accessibility. So you can access your product from any device with an internet connection. It's cost effective, so there is no need for hardware or software installations. And users, they pay a subscription fee. And it provides automatic updates. So the provider manages updates and the maintenance. So software as a service is ideal for organizations that want to use applications without the hassle of managing the underlying infrastructure. Next, we have what is called platform as a service, and this provides a platform allowing developers to build, deploy and manage applications without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. And the key features are the provider manages servers, storage, networking and runtime environments. Developers, they focus solely on writing and deploying their code. And examples of platform as a service include Google App Engine, Microsoft Azure App Service and Heroku. And the advantages of platform as a service are as follows. It allows for development efficiency. So it streamlines the development process by providing tools and frameworks. It allows for scalability. You can easily scale applications as the user demand grows and it offers time saving. So it reduces time spent on managing servers and other infrastructure components. So platform as a service is great for development teams who want to focus on building and deploying applications without worrying about managing servers or the environment. All right, next we have what is called infrastructure as a service, and this is the most flexible cloud model. It provides virtualized computing resources over the internet. So the key features of infrastructure as a service are as follows. The provider manages the underlying physical infrastructure, such as the servers, storage, and networking, but the customer manages everything else, including the operating system, applications, and data. And popular infrastructure as a service providers include Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud cloud platform. And the advantages are it offers flexibility and control. So users can configure their environment as needed. It's cost efficient. So you pay for resources as you use them and it offers scalability. It's easy to scale up or down depending on your resource needs. So infrastructure as a service, this is ideal for organizations that need control over their infrastructure, but don't want to invest in physical hardware. Now that we've covered different cloud service models, let's discuss deployment models. And these describe how cloud services are deployed and access. And the three main models are as follows. You have what is called on-premises, which is also known as a private cloud. Next, you have simply the cloud or the public cloud. And then you have what is called a hybrid cloud. So on-premises, the infrastructure is hosted and managed within the organization's own data center. And this provides greater control over data, security, and compliance. However, it costs more money and requires ongoing management. Then we have the public cloud. So resources are hosted by third party providers and are accessed over the Internet. And examples include AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. The pros, it has a low initial cost, highly scalable and is managed by the cloud provider. The cons, you have less control over data security and compliance requirements. And then we have what is called a hybrid cloud. And this is a combination of both on premises and public cloud solutions solutions and organizations can store sensitive data on premise for security while utilizing public cloud services for other workloads. And this provides a balance of cost efficiency, flexibility and control. So each deployment model has its own set of advantages and is chosen based on the organization's specific needs and requirements. It's important to understand how virtualization and cloud computing relate. Virtualization is the foundation that makes cloud computing possible. However, while virtualization is about creating virtual versions of hardware or software on a local system, cloud computing extends these capabilities by delivering them over the internet as a service. And the key differences are as follows. So virtualization focuses on resource optimization within a single physical system. Cloud computing 
uses virtualization to provide on-demand resources across distributed servers accessible via the internet. Now, organizations use virtualization to improve resource use within their own data centers and to use cloud computing to access scalable, flexible resources provided by third-party vendors. So to quickly recap, virtualization allows for the creation of virtual machines through hypervisors and runs guest operating systems for resource optimization. Cloud technologies, they come in three main models. You have software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service, each providing different levels of control and flexibility. And deployment models like on-premises, cloud, and hybrid describe how and where these services are accessed. So understanding the differences and use cases cases of virtualization and cloud technologies is essential for navigating today's IT landscape and is crucial for your CompTIA Tech Plus exam preparation. Now, with all of that being said, let's do this wonderful check on learning. So the first question is, which of the following best describes a hypervisor in virtualization? Would it be a software tool that controls hardware directly without an operating system? Would it be a type of cloud service that allows users to build and deploy applications without managing underlying infrastructure? Would it be a software layer that allows multiple guest operating systems to run on a single physical host? Or would it be a deployment model where resources are fully managed by a third-party cloud provider? And the correct answer would be C. It is a software layer that allows multiple guest operating systems to run on a single physical host. So a hypervisor is a virtualization technology that allows multiple VMs or guest operating systems to run on a single machine sharing its resources. This helps improve hardware utilization and enables different operating systems to coexist on the same hardware. Next question, which cloud service model provides a fully developed platform that allows developers to build, test, and deploy applications without worrying about underlying infrastructure management? Would it be software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or a virtual private network? And the correct answer would be platform as a service. So platform as a service, this provides a platform that includes hardware, networking, storage, and development tools, enabling developers to focus on building and deploying their applications. Unlike infrastructure as a service, which provides basic infrastructure components, platform as a service abstracts away infrastructure concerns, offering a more managed environment. And the final question, what is the main characteristic of a hybrid cloud deployment model? The resources are hosted entirely on the user's premises. Is it resources are entirely hosted by a third party cloud provider? Is it it combines both on premises and cloud resources to optimize performance, cost or security? Or is it all services are run through a virtualized hypervisor environment only? The correct answer is C. It combines both on-premise and cloud resources to optimize performance, cost, or security. So a hybrid cloud model integrates both on-premise resources and cloud-based resources, allowing organizations to benefit from the flexibility, scalability, and cost savings of cloud computing while maintaining control over sensitive data and critical applications.